plucking carbon out of thin air. That's exactly what this plant in Switzerland is doing. The fans push air through a filter which collects the carbon dioxide. The gas is then piped to a greenhouse to help grow vegetables. In Iceland, the technology is being tested in a similar project, but here the carbon dioxide is pumped underground, locking it away for good. We are planning a scale-up of what we are doing, so a scaled-up CO2 capture plant. We can go up to thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousands, and even up to millions of tons of CO2 per year that can be extracted from the atmosphere. But this technology, known as direct air capture, is expensive, and it would take around 250,000 of these plants to capture 1% of the world's carbon emissions. Luckily, there are other options. Harvard University engineers are hoping to dim the sun by spraying sulphates into the atmosphere to reflect sunlight back into space to reduce the temperature of the Earth. And already underway is a technique known as BEX, where bio crops absorb CO2 as they grow. They are then burned for energy and the carbon is buried underground. BEX is one of the preferred options for how we might be able to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because it can offer a large capacity to take CO2 out of the atmosphere, but at the same time it generates electricity, which makes it more cost effective than some of the other options such as direct air capture. Here in rural England we have a prime example of a bio crop. This is Miscanthus or colloquially known as elephant grass. And the best thing about it is it provides not only a win for the environment, but also the farmer. So it's taken about eight months for the crop to get to this height, which is amazing, really, when you think about it. Will Sargent grows miscanthus on just over 18 hectares of his duck and mixed cropping farm in Norfolk. Once harvested, it's delivered to a local power plant. The field we're standing on here is actually called the barren field because nothing would grow on it. It was just grass and rabbits. And this was a way of actually being able to grow something that was profitable and also you weren't taking anything away from land that could potentially grow food on. As scientists rush to develop these carbon-sucking technologies, they also warn they can't be seen as a silver bullet solution to climate change. They're expensive and complex, and they should supplement emissions reduction efforts, not replace them. Sarah Morris, TRT World, Suffolk.